Hello again, my friends. Hi, peeps, and welcome back to Carpo's channel. Oh, sorry. My teeth just ground together really weird. I had a weird feeling just right then. It was like sandpapery. I just got back from the dentist a little while ago, and uh, that's partially what I wanted to talk about, but not that specifically, but uh, how shit happens to us that we got to deal with. But uh, this video, to try to stay on topic because I don't have my notes or anything written out here, this is just freestyle. Honestly, off the cuff is the way I prefer to do my videos. But I wanted to talk a little bit about our addiction to negativity, our addiction to rage bait, things like that. This is supposed to be a positive video. The point of this video, really, is, is kind of a follow-up to a few recent discussions I've had. And uh, maybe it would be kind of the cul culmination of, you know, the amalgam, the... Uh, you know, composite, the conglomerate of all the different thoughts that I've had lately about what it really means to live your life in a way that you're not constantly stressed or frustrated or angry or depressed. Over the last couple months, I've made a few videos talking about things that are up and down. Some of my podcasts uh, that I post, not here, but the ones that I upload to my podcast page, I have about 60, and a lot of them deal with more deep topics and, you know, things that are a little bit, seem negative. And, and, and I, it led me to think about what exactly is negative. You know, if you're a nihilist or you study philosophy, you realize right away you're at kind of an impasse when you start talking about something that's negative. What is negative? Um, negative and positive are very subjective and really everything has to be talked about. There are no subjects that should be taboo or off limits regardless of how uncomfortable they may be, whether it be about sex, politics, drugs, music, uh, whatever it is for you specifically. And I uh, actually watched a phenomenal video earlier today that was recently posted by a channel called Moon, I think it was Moon, um, that dealt with 4chan and why 4chan is so important. Now I'm going to admit, over the last couple of years, I've had a huge shift in perspective on the way that I feel about speech. I've always been a huge proponent of freedom of speech, but there was a part of me that said, well, look, as a society, we have to be able to hold civil conversations and not be negative and hateful, but that's just part of it. What I've come to terms with is the fact that you cannot stop that. You cannot force people to stop saying anything. I never, never thought that you should have to or should, but I thought that uh, perhaps there was a little bit open to say, well, if, say, for example, social media sites like YouTube, you know, decide to, you know, el eliminate hate speech, and, well, is that a good thing? Well, then you get into what hate speech is. Who determines this? Who are the moderators? Reddit, YouTube, Facebook, they've all been completely ruined and annihilated by AI and moderators that go through and basically wipe out anything that doesn't agree with their perspectives. But there is... Trying to get back on topic, because like I said, I ramble when, I, when I, I'm talking about these topics. Negativity is a drug. And it's not just a drug, it's a bad drug. And yes, there are good drugs. <laughs> I like to compare things to drugs because, for example, you want to talk about social media sites and, and how about TikTok and the dangers of that dopamine hit from that little 30 second video or whatever it is. And uh, they've shown, you know, that it just, the short attention span required this constant dopamine uh, craving, if you will. It is like a drug. It affects you like cocaine or crack. And one of the things is, what I've realized is not just mindless entertainment like that, but on the way opposite end of the spectrum is the rage bait, the constant negativity about Look at what these elite people did, and look at what these politicians did, and look at what the person on the other side did. Look at what all these people are doing. And it's not that these issues aren't important. It's that people give them way more importance than they should in their own lives. That 
what matters most is our own sanity in our own families in our own realities that we live and yes there's a certain amount that you have to extend out to the world and say i need to be part of this i need to whatever it may be voting picking up garbage in your community doing the things that make you a citizen because there are things that you feel in your heart you need to do and they're going to differ for each person but negativity as far as being a drug is like cocaine because it's short-lived, gives you a rush, and then you're looking for the next hit. It reminds me of this old saying, which I don't even remember how it goes, but I remember the idea behind it. That if you say something mean to someone, then you both walk away with a negative. Even if you feel good about it, even if you feel like you've won, the other person feels shitty. If you say something nice to someone, you both feel good about it. It's a win-win. In other words, it's amplified positivity. It does exist. We know it when we feel it. And that's what I meant when I said nihilism will tell you that it doesn't matter what's good or bad and it's all subjective. It is. But deep in our hearts, in each one of us, we know when something feels right, something that we've done that feels right. We get sucked into the negative when our lives aren't going well for ourselves. Let me give you the perfect example here. When I, <laughs> this tooth right here, one of my old canines, it's actually a crown now. I used to have really long canines. I mean, they were like, the dentists were like, whoa, those are huge. And the roots are super deep. And I ended up having to get root canals and eventually crowns. Well, <clears throat> it got kind of loose the other day and I was flossing and the whole tooth just pulled right out the crown. Sticking out of it was a post like that long. I didn't even know what to think. I was like, I thought that was just a crown. My first thought is it pulled the whole tooth out, it was rotten, it was the post from a root canal. All I did was push that fucker back up there and I ignored it. I ignored it for a day, I ignored it for a week, I ignored it for almost two weeks. Finally, I'm like, okay, gotta make this appointment. And for my son who, you know, needed to go in and get this spacer too. So finally went in and did that this morning. He looks at it, I pulled it off and he's like, all right, oh yeah. It looks like the, uh, you know, the buildup came out and he's like, oh, I can fix that. And he didn't charge me for it. He did it for free. He uh, did it quickly. And I walked away feeling good about myself. Like I'd finally got some shit done. A simple thing like fixing your mouth, fixing your teeth. I have a fear of the dentist. I was talking about fears the other day with, I think, my brother. And uh, I was like, Actually, I don't fear anything. I don't. I've like overcome my fears of just about everything. But for some reason, the dentist is built into me because of my past experiences with them wrenching on my teeth and Novocaine not working and them telling me it's just a pinch. It's not pain. Um, but anyhow, he's like, oh, yeah, filed down, filed it down a little bit more and put it back in. And uh, it was good to go. Felt great. Came home. Then I looked and I saw my washing machine in there. <laughs> the whole thing is completely taken apart. Usually it's the coupler that gets broken between the, you know, the motors that goes, nope, it wasn't that. I tried to pull out the spindle, all this different shit. The point I'm making here is that usually when the average person, it seems like, has an experience where something simple happens and it's a simple fix. For me, it seems like every time something happens to me, it's never the most obvious. It's never the, as I would say, usual suspects. It's always something totally complicated that makes me have to go out of my way to fix it, and it's just a big pain in the ass. But is that really the truth? I know in most people's minds, if something happens, it's easy for us to say, God, why does this shit happen to me? For example, your car breaks down in a weird place. Why does it happen to me? But what about the million times it never broke down? The few times my car does break down, it breaks down either in the driveway, a couple times when I was pulling into my driveway, or when I was in a safe spot, or when it was something easy to fix. There's a few times when it's just been devastating, but that's nothing compared to the amount of times where everything's been fine. And this is the main point I'm trying to make here. It's easy for us to point out the negative things that happened in a day, in a week, in a year, and completely ignore all the positivity, all of it, all the great things that happen. And for me, going out last night and getting the Christmas tree, for example, with my family, 
like I got frustrated a couple times. We had to, we got there at, the, at dark and, and we had to go cut it down and then it was heavy and, and then we got it home and the whole thing fell over. It, whatever, you overcome it, you move forward, you just say, fuck, laugh it off and just get, get on with life, right? Same thing that'll happen after all this pandemic bullshit's over. Maybe it'll never end. Maybe it will. It doesn't matter. Eventually, people are just going to go back to living. It's going to be the new normal, and we're going to live our lives the way we live them. And <clears throat> regardless, the human tendency is not to sit and focus and dwell on the negative. We naturally forget things that are traumatic in our lives or that have harmed us. It's, you know, most of us are aware of this. You know, you're like, wow, I forgot that happened. God, that was horrible. Why did I forget that? Well, because... Your brain doesn't want to be negative. It doesn't want to remember things that you don't want to remember. It wants to remember the good times. And this is true. If you think about vacations, and I can't say this for everyone, but from what I understand, most people, when you think back to um, a trip you had or a vacation or something, you think about, oh, that time I was windsurfing or out on a boat. You forget about when the car broke down or you had to deal with uh, delayed flights, those things. But... There are some people out there who do focus on those things. The people who will come back from vacation and say, oh God, the flights were delayed, it was a nightmare. You don't want to be that person. And we can train ourselves not to be that person. Just the same way as even things that do affect us, we worry too much about shit that does not affect us at all. A good example would be what's happened lately with, say, tyranny overseas or in other countries. People are like, look what's happening in Australia, it could happen here. Maybe, good, but how much are we really worrying about something that might never happen as opposed to something that could happen, as opposed to something that won't happen? And what I've realized in my life is, yes, you have to be paying attention to what's going on in the world, you have to be paying attention to what is important to you, but you can't focus on it all the time. You can't wake up and you know see all the problems in the world. If you turn on the news in the morning, that's what you're gonna see. If you just look at headlines, that's what you're going to see. And I'm as guilty as everyone else of wanting to know what the hell's going on in the world at all times. So I'll look at the headlines, and I know that most of them are bullshit, or that they're not focusing on the important issues. So I have to sift and sort and go through all this stuff, and I say, why? Why did I spend the time to look at this when everything's negative? They're talking about somebody who got away with this or that, or a murderer, or somebody who harmed a child. Why is this news? You know, why is this what we want to hear? It's not what I want to hear, but it's the only way to sort through and get to any type of real information. But that backs up to the point of why does it matter at all? All that matters is our own lives, our own families. It's like the same reason we want to buy land and move somewhere, whether it's Kentucky or Washington or anywhere else. I just want to buy some acreage and just kind of be left alone to live our lives as a family. I can compromise with other humans in my community, in my neighborhood, but I can't compromise with an entire society, right? It feels overwhelming and stifling to be close to people in the suburbs or the cities. But, it brings me back to the point here, is that does it matter where you really live? I mean, if you don't have direct violence, I mean, of course we have a lot of theft and things like that in our neighborhood. It's fucked up, I want out of here. But, it's not as bad as it could be. And it's not as bad as some places. You've got to be able to see that positive, too. So, asking about a crisis, when we're worried about things and stressed about things, the big question is, what is a crisis? Because what's a crisis to one person may be nothing to another. I remember when I was younger and I had a dream of one of my teeth falling out, and it was like a horrible nightmare. It was like, oh my god, my teeth just fell out in my dreams. Everybody's had the crumbling tooth dream. Most people, anyway, who were interviewed, I guess. But... The fact is, it really did eventually happen to me. My teeth started falling out. I had all kinds of issues. But now that's nothing to me. I've moved on to other things, and what would have made me panic before now is just like, oh, another tooth. You know, it's, it's just you learn to cope and deal with life's problems. If we don't, then we become too sensitive, overly sensitive. Um, the more you face adversity, the stronger you become. It's just pretty, pretty basic. And um, this means that the hero's journey with, I would highly recommend Joseph Campbell, who brought in some of these old mythologies and stories and allegories and myths uh, to the Western mind, 
and uh, to a lesser degree, so did Alan Watts. But um, the, the hero's journey is basically everyone's journey. There are no heroes in the sense that there are us and them, the people who make these great journeys in life. And look at this person who did this, and look at how many things that they faced, and look at the mountains they climbed. People even look up to people who climb up Mount Everest. To me, that's just pointless. I mean, I look, I look, I look, I have much higher regard in, in the efforts put forth by a person who raised one child alone than a person who climbs a mountain every day. That's, uh, anyone can climb up a mountain and risk their own lives for their own glory. Uh, that's just the thing, it's all perspective. The real heroes are everyone, you and I. But we have to earn that, I guess, what are you doing, Lucy? She's making, my dog's over there making a lot of weird sounds. I'm going to turn this thing. What's up, Luz? Oh. Well, that was probably a bad idea to do. I guess I, guess I shouldn't have done that. That's just, that's the hero's failure. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> at any rate, I think I've covered pretty much all the points I wanted to cover. Say hi, Luz. Lucy. These are, these are the YouTube peoples. Say hi, YouTube peoples. And uh, this is our tree. We've got all kinds of different uh, ornaments on there. We've got uh, various Jerry Garcia ornaments, our, <laughs> our, um, our wings for those that we've lost. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. The holidays are awesome. And that's kind of the point I wanted to make. Hey, that's not for you, silly. What are you doing? You can't eat that. You can't eat that. It goes in the plants. It goes in the plants, silly. All right, so to finish this up, thanks for coming along, and I appreciate all of your, your time and your attention and the fact that you're willing to listen to what I have to say because to me, being able to share my thoughts on here helps me become a little more positive. It helps me to understand myself and the world around me a little bit better each time. And uh, God, I'm really grateful that I can just still sit here in front of this damn camera and manage to talk about things. Hey, no, you can't eat that. That's not for you. No, no, no. That's a vertebrae from a cow I found out in the desert. Stinker, don't eat that stuff, silly. No. She's so stubborn. Anyhow, <laughs> that's reality. That was the point I was going to make, is that I'm glad that I can sit here and just talk about my life uh, and my thoughts with all of you and that you're willing to still listen. And um, also, I noticed I have a couple new patrons, so thank you. I haven't looked at the names and added you to the list, but for those still unaware, you can visit my podcast, 15-Minute Free Thinking, and um, just Google it. It's there everywhere, and it will take you to whatever podcast service you use. I looked at the analytics, and I guess most people use Spotify, but you can l watch it for free uh, also anywhere. Um, <clears throat> so, that's about it, I guess. Thanks for coming along. Gotta go pick up my son from school and do the normal things. And fix my damn washing machine. Because every time we do something we know we need to do, we feel a little more positive about life. And we all know that. And I think that a lot of the times when we're negative, when we're sharing that negativity with those around us, the reason another, <laughs> before I go here, the, the point I was making about drugs and how negativity is like a drug, the way it's like, more like heroin. Because you find a lot of junkies, it's not just the they love the addiction to it. It's that they want to pull others in and get them addicted too. People hate it when others aren't hooked. It's, it's kind of a, something you'll see within addict communities. This peer pressure to get others to do something because they don't want to be alone in it. And when folks are alone in their negativity, especially whole groups of people, they want to bring others into it and make sure that everyone feels as shitty as possible about their daily life and that everyone wakes up and goes and looks at what's wrong with the world and, and tries to figure out something they can complain about and then claims that it doesn't really bother them, they just want to be aware of it. Uh, for me, it's completely different. I've been through that in my own head. I went through years of 
wanting to know everything that's going on, but at the same time, I've learned how to control my emotions and not let that become part of who I am. So, say bye, Luz. We're out of here. Peace out. Say bye. Hey, say bye. Say bye. Oh, do 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 do